to the Arabesque Sewing Studio. I'm Ali Phillips. I'm all about helping you organise your sewing space so you can beat that clutter. And along the way, I'll simplify those tricky sewing techniques so you can grow in your confidence and confidently sew like a pro. Now, I'd love to introduce you to my next sewing pattern called the Sewing Space Station. Now, this is a sewing machine mat with so much more to it than meets the eye. And we hope you'll enjoy all of our outer space references that we've included in the pattern because we think you'll agree this is really out of this world. Now, if you love sewing organisational videos that help you grow in your confidence and in your skills, I'd love you to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. So let's untie this and I'll set it up for you and show you everything that's inside. Let's have a look at the features of this space station. So the mat sits under the machine just like any other sewing machine mat does, but you'll notice that this is only hanging down on the right hand side so that it's not in your lap or getting in your way as you're sewing on your project. Now in the front of this tool panel we have a range of pockets that hold all the tools that you need to work on your project. So there's a room for a rotary cutter or even a large pair of scissors. You can have a ruler, you can have a seam ripper, a small pair of scissors, a marking pen, there's room for a whole range of things that you would need to keep at your fingertips. Now hanging at the bottom of this tool panel we have a little pouch called the cargo bay and this is perfect for holding your binding clips if you're working on binding the quilt or tacking other things together. You can also pop spare rolls of thread in here and sewing machine feet if you're going to be switching out that for sewing a zipper. You can pop a whole range of different stores in here. This also is detachable and unclips so that you can take this with you and use it for a whole range of different things. Now, no sewing machine mat would be complete without a functional cute pin cushion. And so this pattern also comes with a little pin cushion called the pin pod. Now this is modeled after a French tufted seat cushion. And I think you'll agree, it's a really cute little addition that works really well. So sitting right at the front here where you can whack a few pins in as you're sewing. So now we come to the really unique part of this sewing mat. So in the top of this mat are four big pockets and these hold everything you need to be working on your project. So when you finish sewing for the day, you're just going to slide everything that you're working on inside of these pockets and fold everything up. And the first one is a large pocket that holds rulers and even a small cutting mat. The next pocket in the middle is an even larger pocket that holds fabric or your work in progress. On the side here we have two smaller pockets. So this pocket is perfect for holding a range of notions and the little small pocket at the front is where we dock the pin pod when you've taken your pins out. Now this pattern is very easy to reverse if you would like to sew a left-handed version. So if you're a lefty like me and you would prefer to have your tool panel hanging on the left-hand side, the pattern pieces are really easy to reverse. Now if you'd like to sew along with me through this series of video tutorials, you can find the link for the pattern in the description below or you can visit arabescissors.com to grab your copy. And you'll find all the supplies that I'm using here also linked in the description below. So if there's anything you're not sure about, you can go and have a look in those links and find some of the tools that you might not have. So let's dive into everything you'll need to get started. And I'll also be sharing how to choose a pretty fabric pull that works really well together. So to get started, I'm just going to run through everything that you're going to need. So this is the fabric bundle that I've chosen for this. So I've chosen a very nice candy stripe uh, for the binding here and if you don't want to make bias binding uh, you can purchase one and an eighth inch wide double fold binding and just uh, use that if you prefer not to make it. So today we'll also be using some fusible fleece and this is also known as fusible batting and this is uh, just like, like a lightweight batting that you can fuse to the back of your fabric. And because it's only a single-sided fusible and I want to make a quilt sandwich with it, I will be using 
some basting spray here uh, just to baste the other side of the fabric onto the back of this. So you can absolutely pin baste this if you would prefer not to spray baste. We're also going to use a medium weight woven fusible interfacing and this will be applied to the back of all the fabric that is not quilted. And this just provides great stability uh, to quilting fabric uh, just to stop it uh, pulling out of shape and just gives it a really good amount of body without making it stiff. You're also going to need 9 inches or about 23 centimetres of 2 millimetre round elastic. So this is basically like a hat elastic width and I'm just using this to hang the cargo bay um, onto the bottom of the pocket here. And so you can also do make your own little like a bias loop if you don't want to use this. I've got two buttons to hang the cargo bay onto the front and a third button to close the cargo bay. I've got a large handful of polyfill that we're going to be using to stuff this pin cushion with. I've got seven sets of cam snaps and this is what we'll be holding the flaps on the top closed with. So you can buy like a big set of these and it comes complete with the tool that you need to set them into the fabric. And I just bought these on Amazon for about $25 and it comes with a very large range of colours so you've got um, plenty to work with. They seem like they are very durable, I've been using mine every day and they are holding up. So um, the reason I'm using cam snaps is because they are actually a really flat fastener. So they're easy and quick to put in and they fasten really flat so they're not going to add any uh, extra bulk to the top of the mat. So when we make the pincushion, I'm getting you to stitch around the outside of this to make it look like a French tufted boxed um, cushion. And so to do that you're going to need a really strong quilting thread and just a normal sewing needle uh, to do that with. And then when we stitch through the centre of the pincushion to make the dimples in it, you're going to need a, about a three inch or longer doll needle that has a large eye on it so that you can pull that through uh, easily. A whole length goes through the pincushion and you can pull that down really tightly. So then we're just going to have some general sewing gear that is just helpful to make all this work. So just some pins, some binding clips which are great when you've got uh, quite a few layers to hold together. I like to use a stiletto when I'm stitching my binding down because this is just like a, an extra fingertip. You can get in really close under the needle and hold little fiddly bits in place. I like to cut out some of my straight edges with a rotary cutter. You're going to need um, a fabric marking pen that's safe. So I do use a friction pen for some parts of my work depending on where it is. But this is a chalk marking pen. You can also get a range of air erasing markers or water erasing markers that are safe to mark on your fabric with. I'll just have some normal scissors. I've got some scissors that I keep just for cutting paper. I'll be cutting out my templates with these ones. I have some sharp uh, small sewing scissors that I use for trimming my threads and as well as some larger sewing rulers I just like to have a small ruler here just for checking um, little distances that are really handy to have. And I also like to keep some basting glue uh, when I'm sewing my binding. So this is just a really fine tip um, that I have on here. And this just allows you to dispense the glue uh, nice and finely along the edge of the binding and stick it in place. And I'm just using a tacky craft glue in here which dries really quickly and you can sew over it uh, no problems. So uh, you can find plenty of different basting glues um, on the market and, um, and they really are just like um, an extra pin without having the annoyance of pins holding things down. So I think that's all we need. Oh no, I haven't covered the rust. Okay, when we're stuffing the pin cushion, I like to give this a bit more weight just so we don't knock it off um, as easily if you accidentally bump it. So I like to add in a little bit of rice into my pin cushions 
and I've seen people stuff theirs with um, ground walnut shells and uh, different things like that. Just use whatever you've got on hand that you think is going to be suitable for your environment and of course you'll need your polyfill and I like to have a funnel just for helping put this into the pincushion without the rice going everywhere. So I'm just going to take you through how you can plan the fabrics to make this uh, space station. So I've got a completed one here. This is um, my lovely one uh, made in the fabrics called Local Honey. And this is the exterior or base of the station when it's all folded up. So this is what you're going to see when it's folded. And of course, uh, when we untie this um, and open it out, uh, this fabric is going to be uh, laid flat and so you won't be seeing any of it. So I'll go, just go through the parts of the station here so that you can see uh, what fabric is going to end up where. So we've got the base here which is the exterior when it's opened out flat and on the back of the front tool panel so this part that hangs down with the tools in it is the front tool panel and on the back of that if you would like this to be made in the same fabric then you're going to cut that out um, all in the same fabric so you just be aware of what that piece is called. So in the fabrics that I'm choosing I'm going to make my base which is what we'll see when it's folded in this uh, lovely denim and on the top side of that so on, on this fabric here where I'm going to use this uh, peachy coral colour so that's going to be the other side of that. So then this part is called the top pocket panel and this is where you can store all, your, all of your extra tools and patterns and fabric and notions in. So this panel here, I'm going to use this really cool space themed fabric and that's just in honour of uh, the name of my sewing space station. So we wanted to combine a geeky, uh, scientific kind of idea and also add in some romantic floral fabric as well. So this fabric I'm going to make in this and then the lining that you will not see, this will be hidden against the base here. I'm going to make this, this in a just a really pretty blue. But because you're not going to see this, uh, you can just choose any fabric that you'd like uh, just to use up, something that you're not uh, particularly minding how it looks. So you can choose that. Now for the flaps um, in this version, I'm going to be using this lovely rust coloured tilde and on the reverse of that, on the lining of these, I'm going to be pairing that with this really tiny check um, for a nice contrast for that. So I'm also going to be using this same fabric on this panel here called the front tool panel and I'll be using this little check on the inner tool pocket here. Now, like I said, I'm going to bind the whole thing in this lovely stripe. So that will be on here, on the exterior of this, and also on the top pocket panel binding for that. Now there is one more piece of binding that we make, and that is to cover this join on the back here. So if you would like that to blend in, not be so obvious you will probably want to cut that in the same fabric as your base and the back of your front tool panel so just bear that in mind otherwise it's perfectly fine just to use uh, some of this you should have enough um, in the amount that I've given you to cut and the cargo bay for this I'm going to make mine a little bit differently in this so there's two pieces involved in this mainly so this one is called the back and the flap because it is the back and then it becomes the flap. So for this one I'm going to use this really pretty fabric and then for the front of this I'm actually going to use the denim again. No I'm not. Getting confused here. I'm going to use my scientific fabric. So this is going to look like this when the panel, the front flap folds over. So that's going to be there and I'm going to line it with this cute little check one. 
So that's really fun to plan all of that. And I'm after a coherent look here that has got enough um, pretty patterns on it, but not to be just too overwhelming with too many patterns all happening at once. And for my pincushion, um, I'm going to be just cutting a range of, uh, you need eight uh, rectangles in total. I'll be just cutting a range of all of these and putting them together in kind of a scrappy look. So let's get started and cut out our fabric. So let's get started and cut out all the templates and cut out our fabric. 